My upcoming solo exhibition, Sandstorm, is slated to show at the Reach Gallery Museum in Abbotsford, B.C. in the summer of 2013. This show will consist of 14 large oil paintings on canvas that depict the events of the original Star Wars trilogy as seen through the eyes of the central villain, Darth Vader. At the center of Sandstorm will be a painting titled Dead Soldiers. This painting will depict a group of Imperial stormtroopers lying dead on the floor of a bunker hallway and will be based on a deleted scene from the third film in the original Star Wars saga, Return of the Jedi. Imperial stormtroopers were common fodder in the Star Wars films. Countless numbers of these anonymous troopers died quick and bloodless deaths as the heroes fought their way to victory against the Empire. Although this deleted scene is short and borders on the comical, I found that it took on an entirely new meaning once I hit the pause button on my DVD remote. For the student of art history, this image has many historical counterparts. I was immediately reminded of Eugene Delacroix's incredible painting, Liberty Leading the People, which depicts the July Revolution of 1830 in Paris, France. Painted in the same year, Liberty Leading the People is an iconic image that depicts victory for the masses at the expense of the king's soldiers. These soldiers, seen at the bottom of the painting, were indeed impediments to the revolutionaries, but they were also French citizens with lives and families who were unlucky enough to be caught in the unrelenting cogs of history. Images of the dead and the massacred have been common in art since prehistory. This painting from the Lascaux Cave in southern France is approximately 17,000 years old. It depicts a human, perhaps in a transformative state between man and bird, next to an extinct species of European rhino. Whether dead as the result of the rhino's attack, or in the throes of a shamanistic vision, this is one of the earliest images of the fallen human figure in art. Next we see a painted chest from Tutankhamun's tomb, circa 1330 BC, depicting the Egyptian pharaoh leading an attack on the Asiatics from his royal chariot. Although scholars doubt that King Tut ever personally went to war, this chest bears an inscription that reads, The Good God the son of Ammon, the valiant one, without his equal, a possessor of strength who tramples hundreds of thousands, who makes them into a pile of corpses. This ancient Greek ceramic vessel, known as a crater, dates from 450 BC and depicts Apollo and Artemis as they slay the sons and daughters of the boastful queen Niobe. Humankind had already perfected the strange combination of high art with the brutality of murder four and a half centuries before the birth of Christ. Trajan's Column in Rome, completed in A.D. 113, is famous for its spiral bas-relief, which depicts the epic wars between the Romans and the Dacians in the second century. This detail shows the relish with which the Romans took to their task and is only one of several battles found on this 35-meter-tall triumphal column. After the rise of Christianity, a popular scene for artists became the tale from the Gospel of Matthew, The Massacre of the Innocents. Here, in a panel from a portable German altar depicting the life of Christ, dating to approximately 1150, we see the results of King Herod's order to kill all the young male children in the village of Bethlehem in order to assure the destruction of a newly born King of the Jews. Here we see Dutch artist Peter Paul Rubens' swirling depiction of the same scene painted five centuries later in 1612. Tragic scenes contemporary to the lives of many artists are also found in art history. This painting by Spanish artist Francisco Goya called The Third of May, 1808, is one such example. Goya personally witnessed the French occupation of Spain in 1808 when Napoleon seized the Spanish throne. This act of conquest started a widespread rebellion, and although Goya may not have witnessed this exact scene, he painted this work in 1814 to symbolize the bloody slaughter of Spanish citizens by Napoleon's army. Another masterpiece by Eugene Delacroix is this work, Massacre at Chios. Painted in 1824, it creates a romantic scene of the slaughter of tens of thousands of Greeks on the island of Chios by Ottoman troops during the Greek War of Independence in 1822. This painting predates liberty leading the people, and in this case, Delacroix finds his sympathies on the side of the victims rather than the victors. This watercolor, The Barricades, Memories of Civil War, 
by Ernest Missonnier was painted after Missonnier witnessed the massacre of insurgents on a barricade during the confrontations of June 1848 in Paris. He wrote about this work, When I painted it, I was still terribly affected by the event I had just witnessed. Those things penetrate your soul when you reproduce them. I saw the taking of the barricade and all its horror, its defenders killed, shot, thrown out of the windows, the ground covered with their bodies, the earth still drinking their blood. Adolf von Menzel was one of the most important German realist painters of the 19th century. Menzel accompanied Prussian troops in the war against Austria in 1866. He was horrified by what he saw, and later wrote of his naive imprudence by glorifying battles in art. After creating works such as this watercolor, Dead Soldiers in a Barn, he would never again paint a battle scene. This gripping photograph by Matthew Brady depicts the aftermath of the Battle of Gettysburg in Pennsylvania in July of 1863. Brady was already a well-known and respected photographer when he began to document the horrors of the American Civil War. His photography made him a pioneer in that he was one of the first people to document the terrible cost of war with photography. In doing so, he became one of the world's first photojournalists. This epic painting by Spanish artist Pablo Picasso depicts the Spanish village of Guernica in the midst of an attack. Completed in 1937, it was painted in response to the bombing of Guernica by German and Italian warplanes at the behest of the Spanish general and soon-to-be dictator Francisco Franco. Its cubist style is quite different from the documentary photographs of Matthew Brady, but its effects are no less dramatic in transmitting the devastating injustice of war. Guernica, sadly, was only the prologue to the worst conflagration in the history of Europe and the globe. World War II provided millions of opportunities to paint and photograph the dead. This image of American soldiers inspecting a train car full of dead prisoners in Dachau, Germany in May of 1945 was only one of thousands of images to emerge after the Allied victory in Europe. Artists were also present during and after the fighting as seen in this painting from 1946 by Canadian artist Alex Colville. Colville said of his experience in the Nazi death camps, It was a profoundly affecting experience. Obviously it would be, unless a person was an absolute fool. More conflicts followed soon after World War II, first in Korea and then in Vietnam, as did continuing images of the massacre. One of the darkest moments of American involvement in Vietnam was the My Lai Massacre. My Lai was the mass murder of approximately 504 unarmed villagers on March 16, 1968, by the U.S. Army's 20th Infantry Regiment. Most of the victims were women, children, infants, and the aged. Photographed by U.S. Army photographer Ronald L. Haberl, it made headlines in the United States and was one of the events that finally led to the withdrawal of U.S. troops from Vietnam. American artist Leon Golub was deeply affected by these events and created this colossal painting called Vietnam II that distilled the trauma that civilians underwent at the hands of the military on both sides during the Vietnam conflict. Over three meters high and more than 12 meters long, this massive work is Golub's largest painting and belongs to a series of three large-scale works made between 1972 and 1974. America continued to be a cauldron of violence during and after the Vietnam conflict. National Guard troops shot and killed four students and wounded nine others at Kent State University in Ohio on May 4, 1970, when a campus protest against the Vietnam War took an ugly turn. In 1978, 918 American citizens died in the People's Temple Agricultural Project compound in the country of Guyana in what cult leader Jim Jones called a revolutionary suicide. Known as the Jonestown Massacre, it would be the largest single loss of civilian American life in a non-natural disaster until the events of September 11, 2001. Among the dead was United States Congressman Leo Ryan. The Jonestown Massacre inspired Canadian artist Laura Baird to begin a decade-long project in 1981. Over ten years, she created a tapestry depicting the famous aerial photograph of the Jonestown Massacre by Time Magazine's David Hume Kennerly. She felt that the distant view the photograph provided was insufficient in portraying the extent of the massacre 
and was a symbol of the inability of the media to truly portray the gravity of such a shocking event. I was lucky enough as an art student to see her in person at work on the tapestry in Vancouver in the late 1980s, and it has remained a powerful image in my mind ever since. The image of the massacre has sadly remained with us even to the present day. The conflicts in sub-Saharan Africa and the former Yugoslavia painted the 1990s with their bloody brush, and the wars in the aftermath of September 11th have provided us with countless new examples of the photojournalists' stock in trade. Despite the continual output of imagery from conflicts in the Third World, the Western news media remains hesitant in showing us graphic depictions of the dead as a result of the September 11 attacks, Hurricane Katrina, and the Japanese tsunami. We have to, once again, turn to the artist to show us the ages-old story of death on a large scale. This incredible painting by New Orleans artist Beverly Kimball Davis is titled The Danziger Bridge Massacre. This painting depicts a police shooting that took place six days after Hurricane Katrina struck New Orleans in 2005. Members of the city's police department killed two unarmed people and wounded four others, then fabricated a cover-up to conceal their crimes. On August 5, 2011, a New Orleans federal court convicted five police officers on charges relating to the cover-up. This painting stands as a glowing testament to the 1,833 people who lost their lives in the wake of yet another dark moment in American history. Sadly, images of the dead in the media and the arts show little sign of going extinct in the near future. Dead soldiers may allow us to use the world of entertainment as a launching point to construct a world in which we are able to explore and accept the hard facts that have plagued humanity ever since we evolved the ability to both kill and create. I find the scene depicted in Dead Soldiers especially relevant to life in the 21st century. In depicting the fictional events perpetrated by the evil Galactic Empire and their successful campaign to perfect mass murder on a planetary scale, we may gain some insight into the real world's ever-growing reliance and embrace of technology in the pursuit of war. The modern military's use of information technology, unmanned drones, satellite surveillance, and smart weapons has granted us the ability to kill at greater and greater distances. In doing so, we continue to further distance ourselves from the dreadful consequences of killing our fellow human beings. Dead Soldiers is a warning of our future as much as it is an acknowledgement of our past. The prone figures in Dead Soldiers also stand in for the millions of people who have lost their lives in human conflict since we first picked up stick and stone. The anonymous nature of the dead stormtroopers is a blank template upon which we can endeavor to project our own faces and better understand our propensity for war and its inevitable human cost.